30, 85, 86, 87, but why? When I was a kid, most of my questions started with why. I just want to know why things are the way they are. And if you're like me, you want to know why they use those numbers for those terminals. Why not one, two, three, four, five? Well, they do, sometimes. Coming up, I'll answer that why question, plus we'll take a close look at these terminals to see how they work and how we can remember which one does what so that we don't have to look up a wiring diagram when we're doing a simple diagnostic. Today's episode of Tool Demo starts right now. To answer that question in two words, because Bosch. Bosch has been making vehicle electronics for decades and they just happen to be a German company. During the Industrial Revolution, in Germany, there was a group of engineers that got together and they formed the DIN, the Deutsches Institut für Normung, which in English is the German Standards Institute. This German institute came up with all sorts of standards for a lot of different industries, but the one we're interested in is the automotive standard 72552, and that deals with vehicle electronics. Part of that automotive electrical standard are schematics for different electrical components, and they include pin numbers. So when they got to relays, they had 30, 85, 86, and 87, and we're kind of stuck with that. Not exactly simple, but is German engineering ever simple? And that's why they call these a DIN style relay or a Bosch style relay. In the shop, I have a Ford and a Toyota, which have Bosch and Denso relays. So they're not the same, but they do share the same numbering system. So let's have a look at that and see how they work. We've got one relay here in this fuse box under the dashboard on this Ford. So let's have a look at it. And this is an OEM Ford relay. Let's pull this out. This is a DIN type B relay because this terminal here, that bottom one, that's terminal number 30. And it switched with this one here, number 86, that spade terminal there. If they were in the reversed order, that would be a type A relay. So make sure you know what type relay you're replacing before you put the wrong one in and cause potential damage to computer components that are pretty expensive. We're under the hood of a Toyota now. Let's get this cover off and see what the relays look like under here. So we've got these ice cube type, which look like an ISO mini. And here's some smaller ones that look like the micro, but they're not. These are the Denso type. I'm just going to use my relay puller. Here, check this out. It's got those soft tips on there and they're angled. You see that? It's got those 90 degree angles. So they're designed to go on the corners of the relays where they're the strongest. And you can squeeze them and just pull out. It's a lot easier, especially when you're in a tight area. If you want to buy one for yourself, there's a link just there, right under the like button. All right, we've got a couple of relays here. Here's the Bosch relay out of the Ford, and you can see that they're numbered right there. So you know why they're numbered that way. Let's take this apart real quick and find out what's inside. I'm just going to use my pocket pry bar to carefully open this little guy up. Wow, that just popped right open. Here's 85 and here's 86. These are the controllers of the relay. Now we'll flip it real carefully this way and we'll see that those pins are just different sides of this magnetic coil. So just there between the two sides of that coil circuit is a resistor. That resistor protects any computer components that commands this coil on and off. So any coil that you turn off will send a surge of voltage back to its controller. That's how ignition coils work. When you turn off their ignition coil, it sends voltage out through the spark plug and it ignites your fuel. So let's see how that works. We're just going to hook it up to the battery and watch that spring go between pins 87 and 87A. Here's my test leads. They're about 10 feet long, but I've got them spooled up in here so they don't get all tangled up. Let's hook that up to the battery. It's old, but I can still see that this is battery negative. Let's use red for battery positive and black for battery negative. Terminal 85 is ground. Let's ground it. So that just changes the connection. It opens up 87A and closes 87. 
and that's these two pins here. So we're just switching power from one to the other. If we had power on this pin, these pins would switch power. So that's it for this Bosch. Let's have a look at the Denso. Nowhere on this relay is a schematic that tells us what terminal does what, but it's kind of obvious. Check out the size of these terminals compared to these little ones here. These really large terminals are designed to carry the voltage for the load, and these little ones are just for the control for that coil inside the relay. It looks a little bit of a mess, but it's a simple circuit. This is a four pin relay, and we've got starting with pin number 85, that's here. It's always grounded and it's going right here. So that's gonna stay grounded. And pin number 86 is here. This is gonna be the positive side, but that's a switch. So we're gonna keep that off for now. Pin number 87 is here, and that's gonna power this light bulb. And then the other side of the light bulb circuit is always grounded. So the light bulb will be switched just with the relay here. The way I remember these pin numbers is kind of funny. It's back to the future. No matter where they went, past or future, they always started in 1985. So here on the relay, we start at 85, that's the ground. And then it goes to 86, power, 87, the load, the light bulb, and then 30. Most of these relays are 30 amp. So that's kind of how I remember that. It's always connected to 30 amps worth of power right here. Now all we have to do is flip the switch to see if that relay will switch on this light bulb. And it does. This is how cars switch on lights and fuel pumps and other high draw items. They're not sending the full 30 amps through the cabin of the vehicle and into the switch. The only thing that switch is carrying is just a few milliamps to control that relay. Brilliant. If your socket starts slipping, then you need to replace that ring right there. Click right over here to find out how.